5. The Jacobin Revolutionary Democratic Dictatorship The Jacobins came to power at one of the most critical moments of the French Revolution. The superior forces of the European counter-revolutionary coalition on all sides were pressed back by the retreating French troops. In the Vendée, Brittany, Normandy, a monarchical riot grew. The Girondins raised an uprising in the south and southwest of France. The English fleet blocked the French coast. England supplied the rebels with money, weapons. The enemies of the revolution committed terrorist attacks on revolutionary figures. July 13, 1793, the intrepid revolutionary, friend of the people, Marat, was treacherously murdered by noblewoman Charlotte Corday. To save the Republic from the seemingly inevitable death, we needed the great attention of the people's forces, revolutionary courage and determination. In organizing the struggle against foreign intervention and internal counter-revolution, the advanced bourgeois revolutionary Jacobins boldly relied on the broadest masses of the people, on the support of the multi-million strong masses of the peasantry and the masters of plebeia. The historical greatness of the real Jacobins, the Jacobins of 1793, wrote Lenin, was that they were Jacobins with the people, with the revolutionary majority of the people, with the revolutionary advanced classes of their time by Lenin, the transition of the counter-revolution to the offensive, collected works, volume 24, p. 495. Agrarian Legislation of Jacobins Immediately upon coming to power, the Jacobins went to meet the demands of the peasantry. By a decree of June 3, the convention established a preferential procedure for the sale of confiscated lands of emigrants to needy peasants, small plots with payment by installments for ten years. A few days later, the convention decreed the return to the peasants of all communal lands taken away by the landlords and the procedure for dividing the communal lands into equal shares per capita at the request of a third of the community. Finally, on July 17, carrying out the main demand of the peasantry, the convention adopted a resolution on the complete, final and free of charge destruction of all feudal rights, duties and taxes. The feudal acts and documents were to be burned, and their possession was punished with hard labor. It was a truly revolutionary punishment of obsolete feudalism, by Lenin, the threatening catastrophe and how to fight it, volume 25, p. 335, as by Lenin wrote, although only the lands of the emigrants were confiscated, not all the landlords, and the peasantry, especially the poorest, did not receive the land in the amount to which it aspired, yet it completely freed itself from the centuries of enslaving its feudal dependence. The peasantry, after the new agrarian laws, resolutely turned to the side of the Jacobin revolutionary power. The peasant soldier of the Republican army fought now for his blood interests, which merged with the great tasks of the revolution. In these new economic and social conditions, the ultimate source was the source of the remarkable courage and bravery of the armies of the Republic, of heroism that amazed contemporaries and remained memorable forever in the minds of the peoples. The Constitution of 1793 With the same revolutionary determination and speed, the Jacobin Convention adopted and submitted the new Constitution to the people's approval. The Jacobin Constitution of 1793 made a great step forward in comparison with the Constitution of 1791. It was the most democratic of the bourgeois constitutions of the 18th and 19th centuries. It reflects the ideas of Rousseau, which so fascinated the Jacobins. The Constitution of 1793 established a republican system in France. The supreme legislative power belonged to the legislative assembly elected by all citizens, men who have reached the age of 21. The most important draft laws were to be approved by the people at primary assemblies of voters. The highest executive power was granted to the executive board of 24 people. Half of the members of this council were annually updated. The new Declaration of Human and Citizens' Rights, adopted by the convention, declared human rights as freedom, equality, security and property, 
and the goal of society is universal happiness, freedom of the individual, religion, press, petition, legislative initiative, the right to education, public assistance in case of disability, the right to resist oppression, such were the democratic principles proclaimed by the Constitution of 1793. The Constitution was put on the approval of the people, primary assemblies of voters, and approved by a majority vote. Revolutionary Government The violent class struggle, however, forced the Jacobins to abandon the practical implementation of the Constitution of 1793. The extreme tension of the external and internal situation of the Republic, which fought numerous and irreconcilable enemies, the need to organize and arm the army, mobilize the entire people, break down the internal counter-revolution and stamp out treason required a strong centralized leadership. Maximilien Robespierre Portrait of the Work of an Unknown Artist In July, the convention renewed the previously created Committee for Public Salvation. Danton, who had previously played a leading role in the committee and increasingly displayed a conciliatory attitude towards the Girondins, was removed. In the composition of the committee, at various times, they were chosen to discover Robespierre's unyielding will to suppress the counter-revolution and full of the revolutionary energy and courage of St. Justin Cowden. Outstanding organizational talent in the creation of the armed forces of the Republic was shown by a prominent mathematician and engineer, Karl Knott, elected to the committee. The actual head of the Committee of Public Rescue was Robespierre, raised by Rousseau's ideas, a man of strong will and a shrewd mind, intrepid in his struggle against the enemies of the Revolution, far from any self-serving calculations, Robespierre, incorruptible, as he was nicknamed, gained immense prestige and influence, became in fact the leader of the revolutionary government. The Committee of Public Salvation, accountable to the convention, turned under the leadership of Robespierre into the main body of the Jacobin dictatorship, all state institutions in the army were subordinate to him, he belonged to the leadership of domestic and foreign policy, the defense of the country. A major role was played also by the Reorganized Committee for Public Security, which was entrusted with the task of combating internal counter-revolution. The Convention and the Committee for Public Salvation exercised their power through mediators from among the deputies of the Convention who were sent to places with extremely broad powers to suppress the counter-revolution and implement the activities of the revolutionary government. The commissars of the convention were also assigned to the army, where they carried out a great deal of work, looked after the supply of troops with everything necessary, controlled the activity of the commanders, ruthlessly dealt with traitors, directed agitation, and so on. The local revolutionary committees had great significance in the system of the revolutionary democratic dictatorship. They monitored the implementation of the directives of the Committee for Public Salvation, fought against counter-revolutionary elements, helped the Commission's commissioners in carrying out the tasks that they faced. A prominent role in the period of the revolutionary democratic dictatorship was played by the Jacobin Club with its ramified network of branches, provincial clubs and people's societies. The Paris Commune and the committees of 48 sections of Paris also enjoyed great influence. Thus, a strong centralized power in the hands of the Jacobins was combined with a broad popular initiative from below. The powerful movement of the masses, directed against the counter-revolution, was led by the Jacobin revolutionary democratic dictatorship. Universal Maximum Revolutionary Terror in the summer of 1793, the food situation of the Republic was aggravated. Urban bottoms were in great need. Representatives of the plebeians, in particular, Rabid, criticized the policy of the Jacobin government, as well as the Constitution of 1793, believing that it does not protect the interests of the poor. Freedom, said Jacques Roux, is an empty ghost. When one class can impoverish another class with hunger with impunity, madmen demanded the introduction of a universal maximum, 
the death penalty for speculators, and the intensification of revolutionary terror. The Jacobins responded to the criticism of the rabid by repression. In early September, Jacques Roux and other leaders of the rabid were arrested. In these repressions against the representatives of the people, the bourgeois nature of even such courageous revolutionaries as the Jacobins affected. But the plebeians remained the most important fighting force of the revolution. On September 4-5, large street performances took place in Paris. The main demands of the people, including the workers who took an active part in these speeches, were universal maximum, revolutionary terror, assistance to the poor, seeking to preserve an alliance not only with the peasantry, but also with urban plebeians, the Jacobins met the requirements of the sans culottes On September 5th, a resolution was passed on the organization of a special revolutionary army for carrying out everywhere, where necessary, revolutionary laws and measures of public salvation, as decreed by the convention. The tasks of the revolutionary army included, among other things, the promotion of food supplies to Paris and the fight against speculation and concealment of goods. On September 29th, the convention decreed the establishment of firm prices for basic foodstuffs and consumer goods the so-called universal maximum to supply Paris, other cities and the army with food. Since the fall of 1793, the practice of requisitioning grain and other food products has been widely practiced. At the end of October, the Central Food Commission was created, which was supposed to manage the supply of business and monitor the maximum. In addition to the local authorities, the units of the Revolutionary Army, consisting of the Parisian sans culottes, also made bread requisition in the villages. In order to regularize the supply of the population with hard prices with bread and other necessary products, cards for bread, meat, sugar, oil, salt and soap were introduced in Paris and many other cities. A special resolution of the convention allowed baking and selling bread of only one kind, bread of equality. For the speculation and shelter of food, the death penalty was established. Under pressure from the lower classes, the convention also decided to put terror in the order of the day. On September 17th, a law was passed on, suspicious, extending the rights of revolutionary bodies in the struggle against counter-revolutionary elements. Thus, in response to the terror of counter-revolutionaries, revolutionary terror was strengthened. Soon they were brought to trial by the Revolutionary Tribunal and executed the former Queen Marie Antoinette and many counter-revolutionaries, including some Girondins. Revolutionary terror in various forms was also used by the commissioners of the convention to suppress the counter-revolutionary movement in provincial cities and departments, especially where counter-revolutionary uprisings took place. Revolutionary terror was the effective means that enabled a revolution to actively defend itself against its numerous enemies and to overcome their onslaught in a relatively short period of time. Revolutionary terror was directed not only against the political, but also against the economic counter-revolution. It was widely used against speculators, buyers and all those who, violating the law of maximum and disorganizing the supply of cities and the army with food, played into the hands of the enemies of the revolution and interventionists. The historical significance of the Jacobin Terror of 1793-1794 remarked subsequently A.I. Herzog, The Terror of 1993 was magnificent in its gloomy ruthlessness. All Europe was breaking into France to punish the revolution. The country really was in danger. The convent hung up for the time a Statue of Liberty and placed the guillotine, the guardians of the human rights. Europe looked with horror at this volcano and retreated before its wild almighty energy. The Defense of the Country The war that France waged was a just defensive war. Revolutionary France defended itself from reactionary monarch of Europe. All the living forces of the people, all the resources of the Republic were mobilized by the Jacobin government to achieve victory over the enemy. On August 23rd, 
1793, the convention adopted a decree that read, from the present moment and until the enemies are expelled from the territory of the Republic, all the French are declared in a state of permanent mobilization. The people warmly approved this decree. In a short time, the army was joined by a new addition to the 420,000 soldiers. By the beginning of 1794 there were more than 600,000 soldiers under arms. The army was reorganized. Parts of the former regular army merged with volunteer units and draftees. As a result, a new Republican army arose. The revolutionary government took extraordinary measures to supply the rapidly growing contingent of the army with everything necessary. A special decree of the convention shoemakers were mobilized to produce footwear for the army. Under the supervision of government commissars and private workshops, sewing uniforms was established. Tens of thousands of women took part in sewing clothes to soldiers. At the front, the commissioners of the convention resorted to decisive revolutionary measures to supply the army with uniforms. St. Justin Strasbourg gave this order to the local municipality. 10,000 soldiers walk barefoot. Whereas you eat all the aristocrats of Strasbourg, and tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning 10,000 pairs of boots should be delivered to the main apartment. All the workshops in which it was possible to arrange the production of weapons and ammunition, worked exclusively for defense needs. Many new workshops were created. In Paris, under the open sky, 258 smithies worked. Weapons workshops were arranged in the premises of the former monasteries. Some churches and houses of emigrants were adapted for the purification of saltpeter, the production of which increased almost ten times. Under the Paris, on the Grenelle field, in a short time a powder plant was created. Thanks to the efforts of workers and specialists, the production of gunpowder at this plant has risen to 30,000 pounds a day. In Paris, up to 700 rifles were manufactured daily. Workers of military factories and workshops, despite the hardships they experienced, worked with extraordinary enthusiasm, realizing that they, according to the winged expression of that time, are throwing lightning against tyrants. The military ministry was headed by Colonel Bushot distinguished by his courage and devotion to the revolution. Bush I completely updated the apparatus of the war ministry and enlisted the most prominent figures of the revolutionary sections of Paris to work there. The Committee of Public Salvation paid special attention to strengthening the command staff of the army. The commissars of the convention, cleansing the army of counter-revolutionary elements, boldly put talented revolutionary youth to the post of leadership. The Republic's armies were led by young, outgoing people, military commanders. Former groom Laser Gosh, who began his service as a soldier who took part in the capture of the Bastille, at the age of 25 became a divisional general and commander of the army. He was the embodiment of an offensive impulse. If the sword is short, you just have to take an extra step, he said. General Marceau who died at the age of 27, for his bravery, named the Lion of the French Army in the order of the Committee of Public Salvation, began his life as a simple scribe. General Kleber, a talented commander of the Revolutionary Army, was the son of a mason, General Lunn, by origin a peasant, jewel worker Rossignol, a participant in the capture of the Bastille was appointed general and placed at the head of the army in the Vendee. The new generals of the Republican army boldly applied revolutionary tactics based on the speed and swiftness of the strike, mobility and maneuverability, the concentration of superior forces in the decisive sector, the initiative of the military units and individual fighters. We must attack suddenly, swiftly, without looking back. We must be blinded like lightning, and beat lightly. This was how the general character of Carnot's new tactics was determined. The soldiers were inspired by the militant revolutionary spirit. Next to men were women and teenagers. Nineteen-year-old Rose Barrow, who called herself Barrow's Freedom, after her husband was wounded, took cartridges that were in her husband's bandolier, 
and participated in an attack against the enemy until the very end. There were many such examples of heroism, defeated feudalism, consolidated bourgeois freedom, well-fed peasants against the feudal countries. This is the economic basis of the miracles of 1792-1793 in the military sphere by Lenin, on the revolutionary phrase, works, volume 27, p4, wrote by Lenin, revealing the sources of the victories of the Republican Army, incomprehensible to contemporaries. Science and Art in the Service of Revolution Proceeding from the interests of the revolution, the Jacobins with their inherent energy powerfully interfered in the issues of public education, science, art. On August 1, 1793, the convention adopted a decree on the introduction of a new system of measures and weights for the metric system in France. Developed and prepared by French scientists under the leadership of revolutionary authorities, the metric system became the property not only of France, but also widely spread beyond its borders. The convention cancelled the old calendar, based on the Christian calendar, and introduced a new, revolutionary calendar, according to which the chronology began on September 22, 1792, from the day of the proclamation of the French Republic. The revolutionary government, while promoting the development of science, at the same time required scientists to help organize military production and solve other problems facing the country. The largest scientists of that time, Berthollet, Mung, Lagrange and many others, by their active participation in the organization of the defense business brought a lot of new to the metallurgical industry, to the chemical science and to other branches of science and technology. Of great importance were the experiments of Jaiton Morvo on the use of balloons for military purposes. The convention supported and practically implemented the invention proposed by Chap, an optical telegraph. The message from Lille to Paris was transmitted in 1794 in one hour. The revolution transformed art and literature in France. She brought them closer to the people. Folk art found its fullest expression in revolutionary fighting songs, such as Car Magnola and many others, sung in the streets and squares. Composers Gossack, Cherubini created revolutionary hymns, the great artist David painted paintings on patriotic themes, theaters put on pieces of revolutionary content written by Marie-Joseph Chenier and other playwrights who gave their pen to the service of the revolution. Outstanding artists and composers took an active part in the organization and design of popular revolutionary festivities. Victory over internal counter-revolution and intervention The powerful blows of revolutionary terror, the vigilance and self-sacrifice of the masses crushed the internal counter-revolution. In the autumn of 1793, the Girondist mutiny in the south was suppressed. The defeat of the Vendean rebels also suffered. At the same time, the Republican armies with heroic resistance stopped and threw back the troops of the interventionists. In December, the troops of the convention took Toulon, a major naval port, previously handed over to counter-revolutionaries by the British. By the spring of 1794 the military situation of the Republic had improved significantly. The French army, having seized the initiative, firmly held it in its hands. Having expelled the interventionists from the limits of France, the troops of the Republic conducted offensive battles in the territory of the enemy. June 26, 1794 In the fierce Battle of Fleurus, the French army, under the command of General Jordan, defeated the interventionist troops. In this battle, the French first used a balloon, which caused confusion in the enemy's troops. The victory at Flowers was of decisive importance. Not only did it eliminate the threat to France, it also opened a way to Belgium for Belgium, Holland and the Rhineland. Within one year, the Jacobin dictatorship fulfilled what it had not been possible to achieve in the preceding four years of the revolution. It crushed feudalism, solved the main tasks of the bourgeois revolution, and broke the resistance of its internal and external enemies. She was able to fulfill these enormous tasks, 
Only by trying to reach the broadest masses of the people, having adopted from the people the plebeian methods of struggle and acting against the enemies of the revolution. In the period of the Jacobin dictatorship, the French bourgeois revolution was, more than ever, acting as a people's revolution. The historians of the bourgeoisie see the Jacobin fall, the historians of the proletariat see Jacobinism as one of the highest rises of the oppressed class in the struggle for liberation. Why Lenin can the working class be intimidated by Jacobinism? Works, Volume 25, P.120, wrote Vilenin.